a meia praia Ali mesmo ao pé de lagos Vou fazer-te uma cantiga Da melhor que sei e faço De Monte Gordo vieram alguns Por seu próprio pé What's up, my friends? Today we are doing a food tour Algarve edition And we are excited Even though it's super windy And you might not be able to hear what I'm saying I'm gonna tell you that we are gonna start here in o Antonio. Vier morar não traga mesa nem cama. Com sete palmos de terra se constrói uma cabana. There is a lot of delicious food that is native to Alca. And here we are starting out with um, uh, arouche, the tamborim, which is a monk rice. And the reason why this is inherently algarve is because it is caught right here. The best monkfish you can get in the country. So the monkfish is actually one of the most underrated fish I know because People rarely talk about the monkfish as a really delicious piece of fish because it's a big fish, but it is sometimes used as a scam, as a substitute for lobster because the texture is really nice and lobsterish and then the flavor is amazing. So this is a fish that you really can treat yourself with. When we ordered this dish, I had in mind that we would just get like dry rice with monkfish on top, like the Spanish paella. I thought it would be a dry dish. But it said on the internet that the monkfish uh, arouche di uh, tamboril is supposed to be served very wet, and it certainly is. And it comes with clams, a mechuas from Algarve, and with a lot of shrimps, which is also very common. So the food tour here will be filmed on separate days because we want to try a new approach to these food tours. So instead of just eating a full day, we're going to use our lunch and dinner and gather it. Also, that way, that way we can get around uh, the coast, so we get the diversity. So usually whenever I eat stews or arouche, I like to spice it up with piri piri. But I'm gonna start with the real deal, eating it the way you are supposed to do. It's not too dry, but it's still not too fatty. You know what, I think this is my favorite fish. If you have been following our food tours before, you will know that we have been on the hunt for Cana di Porco Alentangiana, which is something we thought was from Alentejo, because the name has Alentangiana in it. Fun fact is that it's actually an Algarvian dish made with clams, but then they use the pork from Alentejo. Mmm, mmm. It has like a really salty flavor. It's so good. The pork has been marinated in something I can't even tell what it is. Is this a clam? This is a uh, mussel. But I already got them. Plenty of them. I love the setup of the carne alentejana porco. It's a bit of every world um, gathered on the same plate. Amelia, you're eating while you're filming. Mm. Stop it. We were just talking about um, uh, prawns. You know, they have on the spine, you have what is actually the uh, tam. Tam, tam. Knowing that makes me not want to eat that. So that's why I, I become a little surgeon. <laughs> Japanese steady hands and I remove it. And I don't know, how do you feel? Leave a comment below because who wants to eat shit? We are having coelho frito and a little bit of lemon on. Coelho frito means fried rabbit. And in Denmark, where we come from, we don't really eat rabbit. Uh, but I have had rabbit many times because I've been in Greece all my childhood. We went to Greece and once we went on this little farm where we were taking care of all the animals and I was taking care of Nikos, the rabbit. And he was so cute. And then one of the last days we had on this vacation, uh, we were having dinner and it was so flavorsome, so delicious. And then one of the ladies working in this house, she said, 
I hope you enjoy Nico because he has been here for a long time. <laughs> And then I realized we were eating the little rabbit that I had been taking care of and it was awful. <laughs> and I almost turned vegetarian back then. If you start petting your pig or your cow, you know, even your broccoli, you will grow a relationship to it. But that is brutal. This is, is um, also in, uh, native to, to Algarve and they catch these rabbits between the sea and the mountains in what's called Barucal. It's very bony. It has a very strange um, taste. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of this, actually. It's really, really good. You like it? Mm. You don't find the taste weird? No, it's a weird kind of meat, but it's just delicious. I like it. Another day, another food experience. And we are right now basically in the middle of nowhere. What we've learned is that the more poor location, the better the food, because they have to make good food so people want to drive to the place in the middle of nowhere. So we have ordered the feijoada. And feijoada is a very traditional dish from Alentejo. And what is interesting about it is that it is actually a stew made out of beans. And normally here in Algarve you would get it with chorizo, bacon, pork meat, and it would be more fatty. But here at this restaurant where we are now, they have decided to give it a little seafood twist. These are some great beans. Some piti piti would be nice. You can ask for it, I'm mm. sure they have it. Mm. Mm. You have the saltiness and the seafood kind of flavor in it that you would expect for having fish in the stew, but it's very subtle. I feel like the beans is very tender without being mushy. And that's something, when I eat beans, I prefer them to be like firm, but still soft. But I agree with the piti piti. I mean, any stew needs piti piti. Lunch has been served yet again, and this is Secretus Pork Preto, which is basically um, grilled black pig. The pigs are generally caught in Alentejo, uh, and this pig also grew up in Alentejo, but Actually, you can get black pigs here in the interior of Algarve. It's uh, grilled in a charcoal uh, oven, salt and nothing else. So the reason why they only grill this in salt and nothing else is because it's very, very fatty. I mean, it's not exactly the most beautiful dish you'll find, but it's just about the pork, really. You know, that, that, that is what you order this dish for. And that's why I'm just gonna have it by itself. When I was a kid, my parents always told me to eat the fatty part on the steak because that's where all the flavors are. And you can definitely tell that this meat is so flavorsome due to the fat that it contains. And what I like about it is that normally, as a Dane, you really want some source to, uh, to put it in so it gets super moist. But with this, you don't really need it because it is so fatty. So even if you just eat it with a little bit of rice, it's still perfect. As Sean said in the beginning, the more remote the better. The food was delicious, it was simple, but it was very good. Come and support Edmundus. Great guy. Yes, and, uh, delicious food. Yeah. Let's um, Next eat food. some more. Swipe to it. Today we are much more inland filming a food tour thing. And that is because we are staying on this farmhouse that is located very close to the town, Sao Bras. Uh, Aperol Spritz <laughs> <laughs> and we found this restaurant that is supposed to be really nice with good local food and that is where we are having our dinner today Portuguese, Algarvian food Chamaram-me um dia, cigano e maltejo 
So we decided to go with the starters today for one reason. The pickled carrots. And Wait a second, Amelia. Something more important is coming oh, up here. Okay, okay, okay. O vinho branco aqui. E o vinho tint para ela. These pickled carrots are made with cilantro, with garlic, and then of course the normal pickled way of doing it with water and vinegar. And I'm excited to try it. I don't recall having it before, mm. but maybe we have. I don't what know. about what is this? Is this that is tuna? Mousse? Tuna, yeah. This okay. is like a tuna cream. Okay. Mm. Oh my god. They are not very acidy. They are more creamy and they are very nice. They almost like they have been cooked. The fermentation has like made them super soft. I like. Did you them. know that? If you want to have, if you want to grow, if you want to be taller, you should eat a lot of carrots. That's something you tell your kids in order to make them eat carrots. Well, really? Tuna. You know, I'm a bit scared of tuna in general when it comes to... It makes no sense because it's the one fish that has almost no bones when you get it because it's so big. But did you know that tuna is not good to eat because it's, it's top of the, the food chain? Yeah, so it eats a lot of different stuff. There's a lot of mercury and stuff in tuna, we've heard. But it tastes so good that we don't care. At this restaurant, we're going to have a lot of uh, stuff that is very different from the last couple of places because this is in the interior of El Gao. So this is more meat and meat and meat. Cheers to uh, another delicious dinner. So, we are having something we haven't had before. This is a special kind of dish for us, because this contains so much of everything we love. It has pastry dough, ding. it has goat cheese, and it has a marmalade made out of pumpkin. So, I mean, sweet, creamy, and crunchy in one. Can I? So they have topped this dish off with some honey. And that actually is something that makes the dish look so pretty. Mm. Mm. This is even better than I expected because normally when you get the goat cheese, it's a bit more firm. But this one, because it has been warm, is completely melted and it's like sticky, but not too sticky. It's more like creamy. The birds are peeping. Oh my goodness. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ao dar uma volta, caí do lancio e veio o diabo. Right now, Jon is having the wild boar and I'm having the lamb. They are both cooked in a different way that we haven't had them before. It's almost like a one part kind of thing. It smells like heaven. And then we have something that is very Portuguese that we haven't really had before. And that is the arroz com coriandros. Coriandros. Coentros. 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 Basically, it's rice with butter and cilantro. Oh, it's so good. Oh my good. god. This oh, is exactly so what I good. hoped for. I, re I really like it. Shut up. I really hoped for, for the buttery glaze of the, of the rice and it definitely hasn't. The cilantro is not as pungent as I expected, which I kind of like because it balances the rice better. Can I uh, participate in the video? You're, you're gonna try the pork. Okay. Oh. 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 Okay. This is so freaking tender. It's delicious. Sometimes lamb can get dry, but somehow they have cooked it perfectly. And you get a really pungent flavor of the green peppers that are in there. You can feel the onion. There's a lot of rosemary, a bit of garlic. In general, this is one of the dishes that I would come back for. I mean, if I've had this before, I would drive from Lisbon to try this one. This is so good. Speaking of traveling far for epic food, this dish is actually a great example of this because we were just told that, uh, especially the Spanish people, they <laughs> cross the border to get this wild boar here. Because even though this is typical for the Algarve region, it's only here they make it like this. Uh, it's a secret, the recipe. I can't talk anymore, Amelia, because after your holes, it's getting cold. <laughs> oh my god, how would you react like that? I haven't tried it yet. Wow. Mmm. It's so, it's like it just falls apart like uh, melting butter of a cookie. Oh my god, it's good. 
Um, and you know, this doesn't get more local because these wild boars here, which is part of Amelia's family, they are running around uh, where we live. So at the farmhouse, we see the uh, Sona de Casa uh, signs, which means we're hunting here. So this is as local as it gets. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> mm. It almost has like a little kick of Asian flavor in it. Like it's sweet and sour. What I like about this dish is that it's familiar, but it's also a surprise. That's the best you can get. The best a man can get. Usually wild boar can get quite dry. This one is not dry at all. Oh, it's smooth like a silky kung fu panda in a pajama. So now we are having a special and very local treat here because we are having an ice cream that comes from this area. It's an ice cream with fig and almonds and it's called gelato do fico e... Amendua. 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 But all I can smell right now is what makes all Portuguese food Portuguese. It's the canela, the cinnamon. I love cinnamon. It almost has like a really round kind of flavor. It's mm. okay, Gordon Ramsay. This is a uh, torte patatas. It's sweet potato dessert, and this doesn't get more local than than than, than this because this is something that is made here in South Bash de Al Spritz. I'm not gonna talk as much as I make because it's you know. It's all about the food. It's okay. Mmm. This is actually better than the the one you had, Amelia. No mm. way. It, way. I prefer the ice cream, and I do that because I love figs and I love almond and I love um, cinnamon. This is one of the places where I would have loved Antonio's verde because I think Antonio would appreciate this food a lot, but I think he would also be like this. No, 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 I've never had this. This is not Portuguese. Was it Portuguese enough? It was, uh, well, it was uh, a third, two thirds Portuguese. We are done eating now. But on a final note, I really want to almost give a little shout out to the staff here because they have been taking so good care of us. It's like very soulful, it's very warm. When you are here, you feel like you're greeted with happiness and passion. It's definitely been the highlight of this food tour but probably uh, the whole stay we've had here at Algarve, you know, and that's in in hard competition with Fim do Mundo, uh, Nov. We have reached our final meal of the Algarve food tour, and uh, we are in a quite random area. It's called Quatera. It's close to Villa Mura, and this area is like residential. I don't think it's touristy at all, but there is this uh, Marischeria called Uyasintu. So at this restaurant we are going to start out with a soba do marisco. So clearly it's a soup filled with delicious seafood. Also, it smells a bit like tomato, so I'm interested in tasting this one. It's very... You are a tomato freak. I love it. Oh my god. Explain the taste, Amelia. Okay. Go into detail. Super creamy. Lots of subtle flavors from the sea. Not too pungent, but very well balanced. It has like an elegance that I really like about this. And then you still have the acidy feel from the, the tomato puree that it's in. Delicious. It's simple, it's a starter, but it's freaking good. You know, as I usually say, this is all the soup I need. But because I'm part of the food tour, I kind of have to taste this, but I have this idea that this is not for me. I mainly even said that I can't, I, I don't like this. <sighs> Three, two, one. I mean, it's, I'm not in love, but it's not as bad as I was hoping, for, uh, expecting. I'm kind of waiting for the main dish, Amelia, but... I know, I know. I just really wanted to have this soup, because... No, it's, it's actually... I see why some people could like this. We are gonna end off this food tour with a delicious cataplana. Cataplana is a very, very traditional dish here in the Algarve. And the reason for its name is actually this dish. 
This is a Catablana dish. The Catablana tool is originally brought up by the Moorish from North Africa all the way to Algarve coast. But over the years, the Portuguese people have learned how to use it even better than the Moorish people did. They use it for seafood normally. You often get Catablana marisco, Catablana tamboril. But today we are having a Catablana amethuas because amethuas is probably also one of the most famous seafoods to eat here in Algarve. Some of the Cataplanas scares me a little bit. Uh, for example, Cataplana de Marisco. Um, because I don't eat all, all seafood, but this one is right up my alley because you got my favorites, you know, amethuas. It's one of the best inventions of all time. You got pork, can't argue with pork. And um, shrimps, although you have to, a prawns, although you have to dissect them yourself. But also, there, it contains a lot of white wine, so it must be your Ooh. kind of dish. Mm. Of the seafood we've had, this is definitely the best. And just look at how beautiful the dish, the dish is. Straight out of a food magazine, straight out of a food blog. Where, where are we in terms of food tour? Is this the highlight or just like... Just based on the vision, pure vision of this dish is absolutely number one. Because it looks so beautiful. Flavor wise, I think it's number two flavor wise. What's number one? Number one was the lamb that we have on Sabores du Cambu. But uh, this is number you two. Mean, you mean the pork, I mean? Lamb. No, the pork. No, it was the, the pork. It no, was no, the no, pork. it was the lamb that I like. <laughs> anyway, really, really good. Best seafood on this tour by far. That was it for the Algarve food tour, guys. I think uh, what uh, other people visiting uh, Algarve should take from this video is that when you come here, try to uh, explore the typical cuisine because it's not everywhere you get it. And I think it's an important aspect of Algarve. So, obrigado por ver o video, guys. Até logo. Até logo. We are on, onwards. More Algarve adventures coming up. Yeah.